All right. Um, thanks as always for everyone uh, for joining. Um, we uh, we have our media avail availability here, UCLA women's basketball ahead of our first Pac-12 home weekend of the year, uh, Cal on Saturday and then um, against Stanford on, on Monday, both at 12 p.m. Pacific. Um, so we have a we have a nice group here. We have uh, head coach Corey Close and student athletes Natalie Cho and Lauren Miller. Um, I'm going to start with uh, handing it off to coach for an opening statement, and then I will open it up to questions for coach or the student athletes. Uh, feel free to use the uh, raise hand function on the uh, participants. But uh, with that, I'll hand it over to coach. You know, I, I got the statistics this week of, I think it was 77% of women's games have been played uh, from the first three weeks. And so, you know, it's just a reminder of, we're just really thankful to have another week to compete, to have a healthy team, uh, to have, have to also have a team and staff that have been willing to make the sacrifices to continue to uh, stay healthy because it is a sacrifice and uh, it is something I'm just really grateful. So as I got those uh, statistics today, I'm like, you know what, this is just reminds me once again, uh, how much gratitude we have to have for the opportunity to play and really thankful for that. And what a great challenge with uh, Cal coming in and, and Stanford this weekend and just uh, really pleased with how our players have been intentional about growth. And they maybe have been better about it than me. I sometimes get a little panicky about what we need to get in and how what we got to do better. And, and they've been really good about following of hey, what is my emphasis of growth this week? What are the commitments I'm willing to live out to experience that growth? Uh, and what do we need to get better on as a team? And they have been really methodical about that. And I think that's been really helpful. It, it makes us not focus on you know, uh, other things that maybe are out of our control. And, and, I'm, and if we can keep going, I don't, I don't know if we're that good yet, but I think we're gonna grow into becoming a really good team if we can keep that mindset. So I think you're tested every week in this conference and uh, excited to see what gets revealed this weekend. Perfect. Um, we, uh, we got a couple hands raised, so um, feel free to just follow suit there. Uh, we'll start with uh, Tukni from uh, the LA Times. Okay. Hi, um, I had a question for Lauren. Uh, like, I don't even remember now. A few games ago, um, <clears throat> Coach Corey kind of mentioned that you are kind of a, the team's point forward, if you will. Um, so for Lauren, how do you kind of see your your kind of skill set fitting into this offense particularly? And, and how do you um, kind of embrace that point forward versatile style that you, you bring on offense? Yeah, no, learning the new motion has definitely been really fun this year. Um, even just when being recruited, like that was kind of one of the things me and Coach Corey had talked about, just my ability to be able to facilitate as well as score in the low post. So it's been really fun to um, have my teammates and the coaches just trust me to be able to make decisions in the post, um, out of handoff situations, just being able to be aggressive to score, but also set my teammates up for their shots. It, I was reading through your bio today and I noticed that like you listed Candace Parker as one of your favorite athletes and she's kind of like the OG point forward. <laughs> so um, can you, can you kind of talk about where, where that inspiration comes from to kind of have that versatility at your size? Yeah, um, definitely growing up. That was, I mean, she's Candace Parker. So she was super <laughs> fun to watch um, just how creative she is. And she really is one who can play the one through the five. Um, and so I think it's been really fun to do that this year and just, even bringing the ball up down in a couple of games um, and being in low post and being able to have defense is not really certain of what, whether I'm looking to score or pass. So um, it's definitely fun. It's even more fun having shooters like Natalie on the perimeter. So you got to guard both. So it's been a good year so far with the motion. Yeah. I would rather them think you're going to uh, score first just to go on record. She does. <laughs> <prefer that>. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Well, I'll toss it over to Dave Marcus, UCLA radio. Well, it was a similar question. And again, for Lauren, you seem to be scoring from both sides of the paint, in the paint. You're second on the team in assists. Are you seeing the floor better in this new offense? Um, I think so. I really pride myself on being like an IQ player. And I think just us playing so open and so spread out, um, it's kind of playing to one of my strengths. And definitely kind of like Coach Corey said, she's really challenged me to be more assertive and more confident in scoring. Um, and in doing that, it's actually made my passing better because it's making people have to respect me when it comes to my shot also. All right, just, just the one, Dave? 
Well, I'm going to ask Natalie a question too. Natalie, you're tall. How do you keep sneaking up on people? It's unbelievable how many times you steal the ball. Uh, yeah, I'm like, that's, I really go off that in my length. So I'm really glad I'm able to sneak up on people. Um, I just anticipate and yeah, get my team some deflections and passion plays. And um, yeah, I take uh, a lot of pride in that too. But also going off um, of what like Lauren was saying. Yeah, Lauren is like, has the highest IQ of the team. She's the best passer. She like has the most assists and like, she just like, a lot of people, she's like the best communicator because um, of her high IQ. And like she really harnesses that. And not everyone on the team um, is able to harness their IQ like Lauren does. And so that's how she leads. And so, yeah. Natalie, that was great. You just got another deflection. Um, Corey, the question is about Cal. Obviously, Stanford number one, Cal 0 and 5 starting the season at home. How do you keep the team concentrated on the Cal game? I think it's really what we talked about, what I talked about earlier is that you don't, it's no different between Cal or Stanford. It's about us getting better. And, you know, I think the reality of how much we have to do and how much we're growing every week is, is motivating to that end. But that's the challenge, right? To not make it about who the opponent is, but to truly make it about ourselves. You know, what's that phrase that um, if you always stay ready, you never have to get ready. And I think that's what I'm really challenging our team to do is to stay ready in practice, to stay ready and to don't get tired of doing it right and stay hungry to get better. And to the extent that they can make that unquenchable and they can challenge each other to grow to that end, it takes away the emotion or is this a, a looking past game or is this whatever? And, you know, we had a, a stark reality. It took overtime last year and they had some kids that have really stepped up. And so if that doesn't teach you something, I don't know what will. So, and they have good players. Uh, they have good players. I think they'll be getting their point guard back. This um, We're planning on that happening. That'll help them tremendously, especially with their turnover margin. And, uh, and so, I, you know, I just think that when you play in the number one conference in the country, you, you better throw out your records uh, out the window because in, on any given night, uh, you can get beat. And the reality is how can you stay level and how can you prepare the same way for every game so that those kinds of things don't happen. Or we'll go to uh, John from the Daily Bruin. Um, so for the players, um, is there anything special with playing the number one team in the country with coming out of Stanford? I think you guys did it last year against Oregon when there were one or two. Is there any kind of added significance to the game in your guys' eyes? Um, I think like in this conference, especially like you just know, like you're playing heavy hitters day in and day out. Um, I'm sure like it always adds like, at least for me, like an excitement factor, like you grow up, you're watching college basketball. So I mean, like you live for games like that. And so that's like a dream position to be in, whether you're number one or the other team is, you know? Um, so I, I just think moments like that, like that's just exciting. Like that's why you come to UCLA to get to play in those types of matchups. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, going off of what Lauren said, I think we're all really excited um, to just have this opportunity to play against uh, one of the top teams and also, but um, we're going to do what we do. We're going to scout, we're going to practice really hard and prepare for both teams um, and yeah, see how it goes. All right, we're going to pass it over to uh, Sue from Women's Hoops World. Lauren, so nice of you to finally drop into the broadcast. Welcome. Um, <laughs> I was going to ask you guys about something that Coach Corey said at the end of the last press conference that you guys had. She said uh, that she didn't think you guys were that good yet. I was going to ask you if you guys agreed with that and why or why not. Oh, I would totally agree, probably in different terms, but I would totally agree. Um, just especially when you look at us like an in individual pieces and when you go down player by player on the roster and you see like we're not really any of us. None of us are at our maximum potential yet. That's offensively, that's defensively. Um, and even in practice, we're definitely seeing some things that we're still trying to correct. So um, I think to get the results we're getting and knowing that there's so much to grow and build on, like it's exciting for us, but um, she's definitely right. And that's, again, why you come here. Like, you don't want to think that what we're doing now this early in the season is our best and that's our cap. So, 
um, yeah, there's definitely plenty of room for us to grow. And so I'm excited for the weeks to come. That's great. Um, Natalie, I know you're, you and Lauren probably are the most overthinking players on the team. So um, do you think, do you think that um, you guys are just, I don't know, do you guys think of yourselves as brave? Because other teams have like scaled back. They're like, oh, we only have nine players. We're going to free, you guys have, you guys have had eight for three months and you just keep rolling. Like, do you guys think of yourself as brave or just doing what you got to do? Um, we're just, I think we're coming in with like a heart of gratitude to even just be playing. Uh, I mean, like a couple months ago, we didn't even know. And even having this opportunity to play against Pac-Cola um, is amazing. So, um, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll be quiet now, but I'm going to, we're going to, I'm going to get us trying to circle back to me in a minute. Certainly. Um, we can go to uh, Amanda from the LA Sentinel. Oh, am I not loud enough? I'm sorry. You're good now. Okay, cool. Um, how has it been like kind of balancing academics along with sports, especially during this time of going through the pandemic and Zoom learning? Um, I have been made more grateful than ever for in-person teaching and professors. Um, but no, it's been, I mean, it's been a cool challenge. Natalie and I are both in our first year in the grad program. Um, and so our program actually is transformative coaching and leadership. Um, so it's been cool just to have like our actual lessons are around like, how are you going to lead um, in circumstances that just make you adapt and pivot. And so it's been really cool. And a lot of the stuff they're teaching is actually Coach Corey's philosophy. So not sure how much of that she facilitated herself, but um, it's been fun. And so it's definitely challenged me and Nat to see like where both have to translate. And so just as much as we're trying to figure out answers to essays and stuff like that, like it's kind of been cool to be able to bring that to the team and our leadership styles. Yeah, I'm going off of that. It's like a completely different experience having to go to school um, online and through Zoom. Uh, right now, Lauren, well, all of you see like we're like in finals week right now, we're almost done. Um, but having to juggle that and time management with basketball and everything else um, has been a struggle because I did procrastinate, but we're good. We're, I, I've gotten it this far, so we'll keep chugging along. <laughs> Amanda, just to piggyback on that, something I've really admired um, is that, you know, you, you almost, you always have that challenge of being at elite academic school and elite basketball and the expectations with that, but you add, uh, you know, you have to go early because you have to get tested every day. Um, you know, you got to stay later to, you know, you can't, and there's only four people that can be in the locker room at the time. So, you know, you're only one person in the cold tub at a time. So uh, um, getting out of the practice, you're talking about elongating their commitments um, just because of COVID protocols. And then on top of that, just the anxiety and uh, really the, some mental health challenges that have been surrounding uh, this time on lots of levels from COVID, from isolation, from uh, racial injustices. I mean, like the list goes on and on. To me, the added of all those things to watch them juggle, wrestle, grow, care for each other. Like I, I just, my hat goes off to these uh, student athletes and especially at this level and what they have done. And it is truly, this maybe is an overused term, but remarkable. And I don't think people know how much has been added to their plates and uh, for them to choose a heart of gratitude in the midst of that, that tells you the depth of their character. We'll uh, circle back to uh, Tukni. Coach, you, you brought them up after um, the USC game and I know that the lawsuit goes that, as the lawsuit goes, but um, I guess, what, what have you been talking to your Aussies about as we kind of wait to see how this thing plays out? Oh, man. Uh, you know, I think in my 28 years, this would be in my top five stressors um, of coaching because you just, I, I just, number one, um, it's dead wrong. Um, I am really disappointed that we would let uh, NBA players in our country to uh, compete um, during COVID. We would let uh, returning collegiate student athletes come in, but we won't let the subset of incoming student athletes based on a technicality of guidance that really makes zero sense. And, um, and then on top of that, 
we have a ruling from a federal judge that says they are experiencing irreparable harm. And I just don't understand why we're still waiting here. When a, a federal judge has ruled that they are experiencing irreparable harm, and not just R2, there's multiple sports, multiple athletes across multiple universities. And I, I just feel like we're letting these families down, bottom line. And, uh, and it's very hard for me because I pride ourselves on being people of our word and following through with what we tell people when we recruit them. And as much as in my head, I know we're doing everything we can from our perspective, uh, in my heart, it just is weighs heavy, and I just I want to I want our I want our our court system, and I want our government, and I want I just want to do right by these young people, and I think we're missing the boat. I appreciate you asking, and uh, I just don't know how you can get any stronger than in irreparable harm, uh, and how we can't get a date to give them, and it's the ambiguity too. We don't need, we don't even have a date of when the final ruling and when it's going to be heard, and so. Um, you know, I can't, I don't, it's not my lawsuit. I say that every time I'm not really allowed to comment on the lawsuit and I don't have enough law knowledge, but I do what I have said. I know for fact. And I also, you know, I feel bad for UCLA and the fact that UCLA has tried to do the right thing. They haven't gone for a loophole. They haven't tried to create this bogus class or anything. And so we're actually getting punished for doing the thing of integrity. And I, I just, I think we're losing on every front, but most importantly, uh, we're not doing right by these young people. Not that I'm not passionate or anything about it, obviously. <clears throat> Thanks, Tiffany. Um, I think uh, we'll go to Sue and then John. Um, you know me and my growth questions. I got to ask the ladies. Um, so what, what have you guys noticed the biggest improvements on? And then what's your next tag for improvement overall as a team? Um, like basketball, like specifics, is that what you, okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so each week, um, yeah, before, in the beginning of each week, we kind of um, sit down as a team and like go through what our focuses are for that week and for the upcoming games. Um, last week it was like offensive spreading and passing. Um, that was one of them and also rebounding was a big key. Um, and so we really do try to focus on that um, during practice and during our games. And then this week, um, it was it, it is screening, passing, and still spacing the floor, um, and still rebounding is still, still on there. So yeah, that's what um, our focuses are. Natalie, Natalie, what's your, what's your grad major in? Uh, the same as Lauren, transformative coaching and leadership. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just going off Natalie, I think it's been, I think it's been cool just to see the evolution of our offense. Like it's um, no easy feat to have to learn mostly on zoom. We were all at home um, and then you come back later than most. And so then it's kind of like you just hit the ground running and so kind of scrap what we used to do and just figure it out together. Um, so it's been really fun and game by game to see us get better and, the coaches challenge us to do a little less hoop mixtape and more stringing stuff together as a team. Um, so it's been super fun. Just since like, it's exciting in those games, like when you do what they ask and like you see it come together and got charisma opening the game up as hot as she did against USC. Like, so it's just fun, like to see the offense, like start to work and see us get more confident in it as we do it more and more. Thank you. That's a great assessment. And I love evolution of the offense. That's your quote of the day. Thank you very much. All right, we'll go to uh, John, and then I think Dave might just still have his hand up. But if Dave has a question, we can we can go to John as well. We can go to Dave after that. All right, uh, Coach, you guys have Stanford coming in with uh, Tara Vanderveer fresh off her her record breaking win. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what she means to women's basketball, especially college women's basketball? Well, and I'd like to say just basketball in general, you know, I mean, I think you look at like uh, coaches that you've heard in the media recently about how she's impacted Steve Kerr from the, you know, Warriors and uh, the respect that she has, um, you know, she used to, she was one of the very few women that was let into a, to watch Bobby Knight practices when she was a student at Indiana. And so you just think about you know, uh, the respect that she's had across gender lines, just the game, the game, you know, uh, that's kind of sustained success doesn't lie. 
And, you know, even just, uh, you've heard me say this before, but in my own journey, you know, I went to her camp as a high school student. Um, then I played against Stanford teams in college, uh, each of my, both my NCAA tournament years when I was in college. And now, you know, um, I'm coaching against her and she's forming me every single day and making me better. Um, and, and I think so many people have stories like that, you know, whatever your role was. Um, and, you know, you look at her coaching tree and you look at, you know, just all the different ways in which she's impacted the game. And, you know, I just don't, I, I don't believe we'd be having this kind of Zoom without, with your interest as media members, without her trailblazing, uh, you know, excellence. And it used to be sort of, uh, you know, Stan we used to call it Stanford and the 11 dwarfs in terms of, you know, the rest of the Pac-12. And if she doesn't do what she does, we don't become the number one conference in the country. So like the list goes literally on and on, on what her impact has been. And, uh, you know, I'm just so thankful. I'm just so thankful. And she's really been a supporter uh, to all, especially the women in our conference and just uh, has just been tremendous a support for us. And so and just believing in us and wanting us to succeed. And I remember a couple of NCAA tournaments ago, uh, we got our pairings and my first phone call after the pairings came out were from Tara. She goes, okay, we played uh, them earlier. Um, here's the scouting report. Let's talk strategy. You know, like it was the first call, like the pairings had just come out. And, and I just think that goes to show her loyalty to the PAC 12, her desire to help young coaches get better. Um, and, you know, just what she's willing to do for the game. So all that she's received this week, uh, kudos to her and well-deserved. Did you have one more question? Uh, yes, I do. Um, first, first, like, how did Tara call you when she was also having pairings? Exactly. But <laughs> Right. I mean, just the fact that she would be selfless enough to do that, you know, and uh, to talk strategy and to what, you know, to want to help. And, you know, I think that I think as her um, she's evolved in her coaching career, I think she's sort of become more. I just really want to pay it forward to the next, you know, uh, group of coaches. And, uh, you know, I think even earlier on, I remember working her camps and I think she was much more, she, I think she would be the first one to say she was much more narrowly focused. And, you know, I think it's in her later, you know, she now, you know, water skis all summer. She taught herself the piano. Um, I think she really enjoys uh, pouring into young coaches. It's not all about the next win. I think she really values um, contributing to something greater. And, uh, you know, it's been fun just to be on the receiving end of that. But I think she would be the first to say that that has expanded through the years. Also unrelated to Tara, but um, I talked to Lauren about this a little bit earlier about this summer when um, there was just a lot of conversation about Black Lives Matter. And for you as a coach, Corey, um, like what were the conversations like that you had with your players? What did you take from those? And what maybe blind spots emerged um, from those conversations that you hadn't realized before? Oh. Lauren and, uh, and Natalie, do you want to answer that for me? <laughs> um, I just, I'm just so humbled and grateful to have a team that's willing to, I call it live in the healthy tension. Like these were not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, um, you know, misrepresent it. The reality was it was hard. It was raw. It was, um, you know, really sometimes difficult, uh, you know, and I think about, you know, sometimes I felt exhausted by it. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't get to be exhausted. They've been living this exhaustion for centuries, you know? And so just, um, but my own wrestling in that to try to go just um, facing more of what my privilege really means and what is my responsibility, especially as a white leader and an ally and what steps do I need to take? And then working through our failures. I mean, you know, Lauren and I had some rough days this summer and I ha we had to work through that. And what does that look like for us? And to communicate really honestly and, you know, but what I'm really grateful for is honestly, it's deepened all, all of our relationships. When you have to wrestle and you gotta even learn to ask for forgiveness and you gotta work through conflict, you actually end up coming out in deeper, more trusting places on the other side. Does it make it fun in the middle? No, um, but is that the only ch way that ch real change really happens or starts to happen? Um, yes, and so 
I think I'm still experiencing my blonde blind spots, like all the all the time, which I slipped and said blonde. Both are applicable at times. Um, but uh, you know, I think the reality of that is that I think that's what I remember asking Lauren, "What does it look like a year from now um, to feel really good about what uh, more than a dream did, the, the initiative did in our program?" And she said, "I it, I just want there to be no excuses of ignorance for anyone who comes through our program." Is that fair representation of what you said? And I just think I'm one of those, right? I need to be different as a result of coming through this program. I need to have less excuses, more knowledge, um, more uh, activity, proactivity on my own for change. Some that they, the players might know about, some that they may never know about, but because of their influence, that I'm making more steps on my own, even behind the scenes. And so, um, you know, and I, I just wanna, I wanna provide the modeling first and the leadership second. Um, and just really, uh, really thankful for what our players, the grace they've extended to me, um, but to each other, maybe more importantly, and uh, in just the, con I, I like, this has not been an emotional thing for us only. There have been some real emotional times, but this is a commitment in our culture over time for steady change, continued conversation, continued advocacy, continued education. And it's not going to be about what's hot on social media. It's not going to be about um, you know, what the outside world sees, we're going to know that we've been committed uh, in, through the ups and downs to creating real change and to uh, having our hearts be softened and changed in the process. Thanks, Coach. Um, I think with that, we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up here uh, if there aren't any more uh, questions. Um, as always, uh, thank you to everyone for being here. Thank you to Coach and, and Natalie and Lauren, and of course, all of our media members here. Um, we really do appreciate the, the ongoing coverage, particularly in this um, really strange season. Um, as always, um, this uh, recording, the video and audio, I'm going to put on the uh, UCLA Media Downloads page. Um, I gave you all the access information this morning, so I hope, I hope that login information works. Um, and then also feel free to reach out um, as we move forward this season with uh, personal inquiries, um, interview requests, et cetera. Um, and uh, with that, I'll say, uh, have a great rest of your evening. Thank, thank you all, and let me know if you need anything. Thanks, Thanks you guys. Have a great night. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.